The saga of the alien costume begins with the massive crossover event Secret Wars in 1984. In this book, an extremely powerful extra-dimensional entity known as the Beyonder abducted Earth's mightiest heroes and villains and pitted them against each other on a patchwork planet made up of fragments of other worlds, which he called Battle World. After one battle, Spider-Man, looking for a machine that his allies had used to repair their costumes, discovered a small black ball of liquid which enveloped his body, forming a new black costume. Due to the suit's ability to change form with mental command, Spider-Man assumed it was some kind of alien technology, and when the war ended, he brought the alien costume back to Earth. After wearing the costume for a time, and it recurrently taking control of Spider-Man's body while he slept in order to swing around the city, Spidey brought the costume to Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four for study. Richards discovered that the suit was actually a living organism, a symbiote that had physically and mentally bonded to Spider-Man. Spidey attempted to remove the suit, which in turn tried to permanently graft itself to him, but thanks to Reed Richards' sonic blaster, the symbiote was forced off. While the symbiote was kept in the Fantastic Four's headquarters for a time, it eventually seized its opportunity to escape and made its way back to Spider-Man, disguising itself as his regular costume and hiding in his closet. When Spidey unwittingly put on the suit, the alien tried to forcibly take control of his body. While struggling to maintain control, and while battling a group of villains called the Vulturions who copied the Vulture's technology, Spidey ended up next to a church bell. Realizing the symbiote was weak to incredibly loud noises, Peter stayed next to the bell, forcing the alien off his body. Peter passed out himself, but the alien pulled him away from the noise, saving his life before disappearing. However, the symbiote survived and re-emerged later after bonding with a man named Eddie Brock, coming to Spider-Man's home and terrifying his wife, Mary Jane. Spidey rushed off to confront the alien's new host, wielding a sonic blaster from the Fantastic Four and wearing a cloth replica of the black suit. Tracking him to an abandoned building, the two super-powered forces clashed, and we learn the origin of Venom. When the serial killer called the Sin Eater was still on the loose, Brock, a reporter for the Daily Globe, was contacted by a man named Emil Gregg, who confessed to the murders and told his story. However, less than two hours after Brock's headlines hit the newsstands, Spider-Man defeated and unmasked the real Sin Eater, crooked cop Stan Carter. Brock's career was completely ruined, and his life fell apart, his pain and rage spiraling out of control until he began contemplating suicide. Having been raised Catholic, Brock went to the Our Lady of Saints Church to pray, the same church where Spider-Man had left the alien suit. Feeling rejection from Spider-Man, the alien found Brock. Sensing his pain and hatred, the two bonded, forming Venom, giving Brock similar powers to Spider-Man and knowledge of Spidey's secret identity. The two continued to fight, and although Spidey initially got the upper hand using the sonic blaster, his refusal to kill Brock allowed Venom to knock him out and web him to the inside of the bell that forced the suit off Spider-Man before. Venom intended to allow the clapper to kill Spider-Man, but Spidey was able to free his hand and save himself while gripping the clapper and yanking himself free as it retracted. Spidey deduced that Venom's webbing must be made of the symbiote itself, and the immense amount of web he'd used to stick Spidey to the inside of the bell had left Venom weakened, allowing Spider-Man to defeat him. Venom was brought to the Fantastic Four's headquarters to be contained, and Spider-Man went back to his classic red and blue costume for good. Venom was later sent to the supervillain prison, The Vault. However, he escaped to challenge Spider-Man several more times. After one such encounter, the alien suit was seemingly killed by the deadly touch of the supervillain, Styx, and Eddie Brock was sent to Rikers Island. There, 
Eddie's cellmate was the sadistic serial killer Cletus Cassidy. The symbiote, of course having survived, found Brock again, breaking him out of prison and leaving a small piece of itself behind. Venom captured Spider-Man, taking him to an isolated island where he intended to have their final battle. Unable to beat Venom in a fair fight, Spider-Man faked his death, tricking Venom into thinking that he'd won, and leaving him on the island alone. However, it's revealed that the symbiote piece that Venom left behind in his cell was actually its offspring, another symbiote that bonded with Cletus Cassidy to form Carnage. While Venom had some twisted sense of justice, Carnage was an unrepentant killer. He went on a killing spree, slaughtering a dozen innocent people, while Spider-Man worked diligently to track him down. Spidey finally found Cassidy in the remains of the St. Estes home for boys, the place where he grew up and where he likely committed his first murder. Spider-Man and Carnage fought, but in the end, Carnage escaped, leaving behind a message scrawled in his own blood. When the killing continued, Spider-Man decided that he had no choice but to recruit Venom into the fight. With the help of the Human Torch, Spider-Man returned to the island, and while Venom initially attacked the two heroes, Spidey was able to get him to listen by telling him about Cassidy's killing spree. Hating the idea of innocent people being slaughtered, Venom agreed to help stop Carnage in exchange for his own freedom. While the Torch went off to join up with the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man and Venom tracked down and attacked Carnage. Carnage, however, overpowered his two opponents and escaped, kidnapping J. Jonah Jameson and bringing him to a heavy metal concert at Madison Square Garden, intending to kill him in front of a live audience and incite mass chaos. Spidey and Venom arrived, rescuing Jameson and battling Carnage yet again. While Venom fought with Carnage, Spider-Man programmed the concert sound system with the same frequency of the sonic blaster that he'd used against Venom before. With Carnage defeated, Spider-Man also broke his promise to Venom, intending to capture him too, and while Venom fought back, Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four arrived to help take him down, and both Venom and Carnage were taken into custody. So that was the origin of both Venom and Carnage. Shout out to Brandon Neal for suggesting this topic. Do you guys want to know what happens next? Or perhaps you'd like to know more about the Secret Wars where Spider-Man obtained the alien costume? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe for more marvelous content. If you like this video, you can leave a thumbs up or you can share it on your favorite social media platform. And if you want to support the show even further, you can donate at patreon.com slash Until next time, true believers, Excelsior!